Joker kills the Batman, and so does Nightwing. There was a recent event within DC Comics known as the Night Terrors event, and everyone within the DC Universe was put to sleep and had to relive their worst nightmares. For the Joker, he killed the Batman, and his worst nightmare was what happens next? Well, for Nightwing, it was the fact that he had killed Batman and was unable to live with that and understand what exactly had happened. So now today, we're going to bring you both Joker and Nightwing's worst nightmares from Night Terrors, where you get to see the adventures of them killing Batman. I hope you guys enjoy. As the world sleeps, there's a storm over Gotham as the forces of good and evil continue to battle their endless war. Batman tells the Joker that he'll never win, and the Joker laughs. Oh, Batman, my dearest friend, don't you know that nobody wins at these? The fun is playing the game. Batman reaches out, and as he lunges for Joker, he slips, falling face first on the metal roofing. The Joker bursts out laughing. <laughs> that looked like it hurt. You might want to consider getting some shoes with better traction. But Batman doesn't move, and his body continues to slide down the wet roof. You're gonna get up, right, Batman? Lightning strikes as the lifeless body falls over the edge. Do they make the roof more slippery or something? And Gaggy the Clown tells him, no, it's just the rain. Maybe? The body lands with a loud crunch, and the Joker looks over, stating that they should probably check on him. Otherwise, they're just standing around on a roof like a bunch of clowns. As the three of them get down, they see Batman has yet to move. Maybe he's just uh, unconscious, the Joker asks. They turn Batman's mangled body over, and the Joker realizes, okay, he's not unconscious. What are we supposed to do now? Did we just kill Batman? We should uh, probably leave and throw the body in the trunk. I I'll think of something. At the local diner, the Joker sits beside the dead Batman playing with his food when Gaggy says, Uh, maybe we should kill Superman next. Joker looks up. And how are we supposed to kill Superman? Do you expect him to just fall off a roof and die like a freaking moron? Gaggy chimes in. Well, we should do something. How about we plan something a bit more fun? Two days later, aboard a large transport ship, Joker and his henchmen dress as pirates as the crew is taken hostage. Joker asks the captain, What exactly are you transporting here? The captain tells him, Unrefined uranium ore. Where is it? It's in the hold, but there's no security protecting it. Really? We can just take the uranium ore? Yes, there's nothing stopping. The Joker sighs, stabbing the captain. Tell the goons to get the plutonium. Uranium? Ah, who cares? I guess we'll make a bomb or something. A few days later, the bored and unkept Joker is eating his breakfast as Gaggy asks, Do we have any plans today? Joker sighs. I was thinking about watching the real Housewives of Metropolis. You finished that yesterday. I guess I'll start a rewatch. Gaggy holds up a newspaper with the headline, Prime Wave Hits Gotham, Where Is Batman? Look, we did it! and everyone else is getting rich while we do nothing. This is what you've worked for your whole life, Joker. What am I supposed to do now? All I want to do is watch Real Housewives. Gaggy gets up throwing the paper. This isn't what I signed up for. I could be henching for Mad Hatter right now. As the papers fall, one lands on Joker's lap, titled Jobs. The next day, John D, who is insomnia inside of Joker's nightmare, sits at his desk at Wayne Enterprises. Our fear of influence touches every living soul on the planet. It's tireless work, but it's worth it. We work while the world sleeps, is what I like to say. Full disclosure, the man who had your position before, Mr. Armstrong, was arrested for his role in the hijacking of a boat. You may have heard about that, and that's why we're in a rush to fill the position. And you seem like the right man, the Joker using the false name Johan Kaiser, fixes his suit and glasses. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. D. I can't wait to join the team. It feels like this will give me a real sense of purpose in my life, something that I feel has been missing for quite some time. Joker then takes a seat inside of his cubicle, and the first thing that he tries to look up is, where is all the money? But he gets invalid data request. 
Next, he tries looking up secret weapons projects, but that is also denied. At that moment, a voice calls out, caught you, and the Joker panics, but a woman peers around the corner. Sorry that I startled you. My name's Helen, and I just wanted to introduce myself. Make sure you're getting settled in, okay? I think my computer's broken. I can't access the money or the secret files. I need to access weapons, blueprints, or lists of people that I can bribe. Helen stares for a moment and begins to laugh. I'm not sure what's so funny about that. Helen wipes a tear away. You're making a joke about David Armstrong, right? Anyway, we should hurry. We don't want to be late for the meeting. Joker heads off to his first cubicle blue collar meeting. A few mundane weeks later, Joker is pouring himself a coffee, telling the others in the break room that he used to work in a calendar factory. They tried to fire him for taking a day off. Also, he kidnapped the boss's wife. But as he gets no responses, his boss, Mr. Goodman, steps in, asking everyone if he could have a moment with their newest employee. As everyone clears out, Joker asks, Is everything all right, Mr. Goodman? It wasn't my joke, was it? Goodman tells him, No, it's not his jokes. Everyone enjoys them. What he wanted to talk about was his performance. Looking over his end-of-month reports, they don't really look like reports. They're just lines scribbled on pieces of paper. One image of one of them appears to be a man being deflowered by a dog or maybe a boar, and the man is labeled with his name, Mr. Goodman. Joker flips through the papers. Ah, really? I, I don't see that here. Strange. But before he could finish, Goodman takes the papers back asking, What are you even doing here? Because this work shows no indication that you have any idea how to even use... But before he could finish, Joker grabs the microwave, bashing it over Goodman's head, turning it on. You ask way too many questions! The microwave fries Goodman's head, and Joker steps out as Helen runs over asking if everything's okay. She heard a loud noise. Yes, yes, everything's fine. I uh, left something in the oven. I'm going to take the rest of the day off. So the next day, the Joker is standing on his desk, calling out to anyone who will listen. You're all cogs in the machine that seeks to destroy us. We're bootlickers to a capitalist state that seeks to exert control over us. You do nothing. You serve no purpose. But Mr. D, once again, insomnia, walks up asking, Can I see you for a moment? Joker looks at Mr. D. I'm sort of in the middle of something. Yes, of course. When you're finished then, Mr. Kaiser. So Joker goes back to his monologue. Your own families won't even mourn your deaths. After a few more moments of silence, Mr. D asks, Is that it? Yeah, yeah, I I'm done, Mr. D. Let's talk. Mr. D brings Joker into his office, and he says that he might have heard about Mr. Goodman by now. He died yesterday. He was in an accident in the break room. Hit his head and, well, he's going to have the forever sleep now. Joker reaches into his trench coat, pulling out a gas mask. You do say... Yeah, it's quite possible he took his own life. The Joker stops, just shy of activating the gas strapped to him. Wait, what? Mr. D turns back with two glasses, and he laughs. What they told me really is true. Mr. Kaiser, you really are a jokester. But let's be serious for a moment. You're a rising star. Bruce Wayne has even taken a shine to you. With Goodman dead, I need someone who isn't afraid to dedicate his whole life to the job. I would like to promote you to Regional Management Assistant Vice Supervisor. Uh, are you sure? Sure as I've ever been, Mr. Kaiser. Between the arrests and the deaths, if we don't turn this ship around, Batman himself is going to pay us a visit here on the ninth floor. Ah, uh, yeah, you see, the problem with that is Batman is dead. Ha 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 you crack me up, Mr. Kaiser. A few more weeks pass, and Joker is presenting the month's quarterly reports, telling everyone that he isn't sure if someone forgot a decimal or a multiplier. But this is bad. The last time I saw something this ugly is when they pulled Mr. Goodman's head out of the microwave. Everyone stares for a moment, and then they begin to laugh. All right, everyone, that's enough. Go home. We're done for the day here. One of the girls stops before leaving, asking, You know, a few of us are going out for drinks. It's Randy D'Amico and Shipping's birthday. Maybe you'd like to come? So a few hours later, the Joker is yelling. Who's having another with me? Anyone, anyone, who's gonna drink with me? Helen, Helen, drink with your boss, Helen, Helen. But everyone quietly and awkwardly clears out of the bar with the Joker scoffing. If you didn't want to drink with me, that's fine anyway. I was gonna poison them all. When the Joker leaves, he notices a couple of men following him and he begins to run down an alleyway. As soon as he turns the corner, he's cracked in the head with a bat, and the group of men begin to kick the crap out of him. 
You've all just made a very big decision in your lives. Very big! <laughs> See what I mean? He gouges out the eyes of one man with his thumbs, and then he turns, shouting, Gotham is my town! You're all just bloody tourists. You have no idea who you just crossed paths with. But out of the shadows, Gaggy steps out. Is, is that you? Joker smiles with his bloody face. Oh, hello, Gaggy. Looks like you've branched out into more pathetic ventures. We didn't know what happened to you. We looked everywhere for you, boss. The rumors are that Batman is back. We were worried that he came for you. Joker dusts himself off, telling Gaggy. Stop making up lies. It's unbecoming of a man of your stature. Well, how have you been? Setting up your next big score? No. Joker then walks off. You should find something that gives you purpose. You can't sit around waiting all day for a man in a bat costume to assault you. What kind of life is that? So the next morning, the Joker heads into work, all bandaged up, telling everyone that they should have stuck around for karaoke. His tears of the clown would have given them chills. He also does some Fleetwood, but Helen stops him, asking, What the hell happened? Oh, what, this? You should see the other guy. I gorged his eyes out with these babies. A few of the workers laugh, but one of them says that crime is really getting out of control. Where is Batman when they need him? Oh, Batman's corpse is in my closet at home. But another worker chimes in, stating that his wife was mugged last week by the reservoir. Thankfully, she's okay, and Batman even got her purse back. Joker spits out his coffee. What? Y yeah. Is she sure that it was Batman? Yeah, there's not a lot of other guys dressed up like a giant bat last time I checked. So on his walk home, Joker looks in the sky and notices the bat signal, and he begins to grind his teeth. As he heads into the apartment building, old man Jarvis walks out with his dog. How's work, Ben? Oh, uh, you know, just another day working for the man. Joker sighs as he goes inside, and he takes off his coat, shooing away the flies. He hangs it up, turning on the TV. The news anchor begins to report the week in business. They go on explaining that Wayne Enterprises is facing huge penalties with the IRS for misreporting their quarterly expenses. Bruce Wayne himself issued a statement stating that he was embarrassed by the report and would personally like to get to the bottom of how it happened. Joker grabs a drink. Good. Go get him, Bruce. Porter goes on stating that in city news, Batman broke up a major jewel heist the previous night. The police state that this is the fifth major burglary that Batman has stopped this month. But while the Joker is watching this, with his closet wide open behind him, Batman's rotting corpse is hanging there. Joker kicks his feet up, grabbing the remote. What channel is the Real Housewives on again? The corporate life was working for Joker. He had a steady job, legitimate income, and most of all, purpose. Except, it wasn't a real purpose, it was a fake purpose. He didn't have a purpose without Batman around, and worried about Batman being dead, was beginning to spread. So Joker did what no one thought possible. He became the Batman, but a very brutal, violent, murderous Batman. At least, that's what he thought until he woke up. He woke up gasping from this dream that he had become Batman and his wife, Lena, asked if he had another bad dream. Joker looks at her. What? Oh, maybe. Did I wake you, sweetie? Before she could answer, his son, Albert, comes into the bedroom asking, What are you doing sleeping still? I'll be late to practice. Joker gets out of bed, telling him it'll be okay. We won't be late. So how about some of Papa's famous clown pancakes before we leave? Yes, life was going quite swimmingly for the Joker. He was even rising in the ranks at work, becoming a hiring manager and hiring all of Gotham's old villains who were trying to lay low while they figure out if the rumors of Batman's return true. Of course, that can't be true, because Batman's dead corpse is sitting in the closet of the Joker's house. So obviously, the villains are the crazy ones. Or are they? Maybe the Joker is the crazy one. His dreams of becoming Batman, they feel so real. For example, last night, he went on patrol stopping a mugging by none other than his former henchman, Gaggy. First, Joker made some quips while killing the two lackeys. Then it was Gaggy's turn. Gaggy tried to reason with the Joker. He told him that they used to work together, but the Joker took Gaggy's back. I work alone. Is this a joke, boss? This is a new gig you've been doing? We heard you went straight. Joker winds the bat up. No, I heard that you're going straight too. And as that bat cracks, we cut to a different time period in the Joker's life. 
He hits a baseball that goes flying into the air and the Joker makes a break for first. Bruce Wayne is calling out from the dugout. Go for two! Go for two! Joker slides in as the umpire yells, safe! And the second baseman tells him that it was a nice hit. Mr. Luther was striking everyone out, but he's the only one who got the bat on the ball. They should call him Batman. Joker looks at him. What did you say? You know, because it's baseball, Batman. It's just a joke. Don't you like jokes? Joker begins to strangle the man. I love jokes! <laughs> Lex Luthor yells to Bruce, telling him to get his man off the field. Bruce reels him back in. You did good out there. We should have dinner. My place. Any food allergies? Ah, uh, just shellfish. And Bruce tells him perfect. Later that night, Joker arrives at Wayne Manor, where John D, aka Insomnia, or rather, the role of Winchester, Bruce's butler, greets him at the door. I'm terribly sorry, but Mr. Wayne is not here. He was called away on urgent business and he won't be back for a few days. But Bruce walks up wearing his trademark Hawaiian shirt and purple hat. He begins to laugh. <laughs> of course I'm here, Windham. Have you been drinking again? Johan, so glad you can make it. The Joker comes in under his alias, Johan, telling him that he hopes that it isn't about the baseball game. What? No, have a seat, Johan. He walks to the other end of the comically long dining table. Bruce says that Winthorpe here has cooked them a lovely meal, an appetizer of oysters, followed by delicious lobster bisque, and then the main course of black pepper crab. Joker scoffs. I hope you don't mind the anaphylactic shock. Oh, that's going to be perfect. If this isn't about the baseball game, why do you have me here? It's because you've been doing great work and I feel that something is off. Like you're not your normal self, the one that we hired so long ago. Well, legal said that I couldn't joke around as much with all of the lawsuits still pending. Bruce begins to shovel food into his mouth. We need spirit in this world. We need people to be a little crazy. A man without a sense of humor is like Gotham without Batman. Joker yawns. <sighs> I thought Batman died, but apparently people keep seeing him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You're so funny, Johan. If Batman ever died, people would lose their minds. Everything would be so boring. Maybe that's what's wrong with you. Batman died and part of you died with him. Without Batman, you're broken. But this imposter is awakening something. But then Bruce bursts out laughing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We all know that Batman is fine, watching over us all. So whatever seems wrong with you, you must simply be imagining it. Maybe this is all a dream. Winchester leads it whispering. You'll have to excuse the sir. He has a shellfish allergy that makes him act erratically. Stop whispering about me, Wilson! Joker blinks again when his name is called. And then he looks around. Where am I? And one of the board members at the meeting that he forgot he was at is telling him about the new expense reports and he just spaced out like a nut job. Nut job? Very funny, I'm very funny. Here's a joke for you. Joker begins to stab the board member with a pencil. I'm gonna tear your head off and use your throat like a toilet. Then they're gonna stitch your stupid head back on and bring your body to your daughter's birthday next week as a diarrhea pinata. But Mr. D walks in the room and the Joker looks back. Oh, you hadn't told me that you'd be at the meeting. He stabs the body one more time and then pushes it onto the table as Mr. D looks at him. I just wanted to tell everyone. We're closing up shop early today so the building can get fumigated. But I'd like a word. Is everything okay, Johan? Joker straightens his jacket. No, Bruce Wayne told me something at dinner and it's been bothering me, but it's nothing. I'm just being silly. Mr. D tells him that HR warned him about being silly, but keep in mind, Bruce loves to play tricks. He likes to get into our heads. You know how trillionaires are. The important thing is to remember how much you love your job. Joker heads home for the day and when he enters his home, his worst fears come to life as he sees his son, Albert has discovered Batman's body in the closet. He quickly begins to stuff the rotting corpse back in. Don't you ever go in there again! You know the rules! Why aren't you in school? It's nighttime and I'm sick! Why is Batman's dead body in there? Joker slams the door. You have a, you have a crazy imagination, Gaggy! Look, I really don't need this right now. Just go to bed, Gaggy, okay? <laughs> As Albert leaves, Lena asks what's wrong and Joker tells her nothing. 
Just Bruce Wayne getting in my head is all, making me think something is wrong with me, and I took it out on the boy. What's in the closet, dear? Lena asks, and Joker walks over. Nothing! There's nothing wrong with me! To prove it, Joker goes out telling everyone as he walks by. There's nothing wrong with me! I tried to tell you all that Batman was dead, but now there's a fake one running around. Does that even make sense? Joker pleads his case to the man at the urinal. The man asks, can you just stop looking at me? So Joker grabs him. I need to prove it. I'll prove that Batman's alive. All I have to do is catch him. He hurries to the hardware store, breaking and grabbing several items and recreating his toxin before hiring some men to pretend to rob somebody. He gives the men the toxin hiding while they get to work. And just as they begin to rob someone, Batman appears, except it's still the Joker in the Batman outfit. He punches the hired goons, cracking a few jokes. The face paint begins to stick to his hand. What the hell is this? It's too sticky. Get away. The goon grabs the toxin and the Joker yells, wait, kill them all. The goon cracks it. I was told that he'd say that. Joker begins to inhale the gas. You can't do this. You can't kill Batman. We need Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and the Joker then wakes up in the old abandoned warehouse where some of Gotham's other villains are sitting. I just had the strangest dream. Solomon Grundy looks at him. It's okay. You with friends now. And Joker sighs, laying back down. Shut up. I'm going back to sleep. And that is the story of what would happen if Joker killed Batman. Now it's time to tell you the story of what would happen if Nightwing killed Batman. Everything was a haze as Nightwing begins to come too. He starts to hear voices. He tries moving his arms and his legs and he finds himself strapped down. He begins to ask, what is going on? The nurse tells him that he's starting to come around. Should we give him more of a painkiller? The second nurse tells him no. The pain will provide him with some clarity. A clear head is paramount to his recovery. Nightwing finds himself wheeled down the hallway, trying to take in what he can to detect that this place is familiar, because it looks like he is in Arkham Asylum. The nurse continues to talk, stating that he's still a bit groggy from the sedatives. They'll wear off soon enough, but then he'll remember. He'll remember. The next time Nightwing snaps to, he's being hosed down by some security guards as they laugh at him, panicking. Oh, it looks like the killer can't even handle a little bit of water. Loosen up, boy. Enjoy your spa day. Once they're done, the guards throw him his clothes. Nightwing tries to process what this even is, how he even got here, and why does he hurt so much. After getting dressed, Nightwing is then handcuffed, and he walks down the hall to his cell, where many of the criminals he helped put away welcome him with open arms. But something's off. They're not all yelling at him with claims that they'll get their revenge. They're talking to him like he's one of them. The guards toss Nightwing into his cell, telling him to go on and get settled. If he doesn't want any problems, he better make nice with his celly. Nightwing looks around at the one-bed cell. Celly? Wait, there's been a mistake. Someone explain to me what's going on! He bangs on the cell door, and Two-Face is flipping a coin. What is out? Everyone knows about you and what you did. Sure, out there you're a monster. But in here, you're an icon, kid. Nightwing tells him, Whatever you think I've done, I didn't. You must not remember it then. Don't worry, the drugs should last you long enough, especially with that guy in your cell. Nightwing looks back again. Who? There's no one else here! Getting nowhere, Nightwing lays down to try and let the sedatives and the drug work through his system, trying to piece together what actually happened. When a voice whispers to him to try and get some rest. Perhaps, once he wakes up, it'll all have been a nightmare. Nightwing begins to drift off to sleep, beginning to see pieces of something. A vision. The past. Whatever it is, it's violent and there's blood on his hands. But before he could look down to see who he was hitting, the police arrive. They yell for him to put his hands up to where they can see them. Nightwing begins to run. It wasn't me! You have the wrong guy! But the animal police charge at him, asking, Then whose blood's all over your sticks then? Give it up already! We got you cornered! Nightwing runs into a dead end, turning back. I'm just gonna have to go through them to get out of here. 
The police are hardly a problem, especially when he tries. But no matter how skilled he is at fighting, a stun gun to the back can put down just about anyone. One of the officers scoffs that it's one more murderous animal for the funny farm. Nightwing tells them to stop. I I'm not. Who do you think I killed? At that moment, Nightwing snaps to reality. He wakes up. He's being electrocuted awake and one of the rat doctors says that he's regaining consciousness. Should they administer more anesthesia? And a voice over the comm says no. Let him wake up. The pain will be good for him. The rat nurse readies a syringe stating that if he survives the procedure, of course. The voice goes on stating that death has curative properties as well. Remove the mouthpiece. I'm curious if our guest has begun to remember. As the mouthpiece is removed, a voice says, Welcome back to the land of the living. Do you remember what you did? How you got here? Nightwing forces a smile. Yeah, ask your mom what I did. With that, Nightwing is electrocuted again. Dig deep, recall your deeds. Nightwing screams, struggling in his chair until he rips apart the leather straps beginning to stand back up. The doctor tells him, please remain calm. The treatments may hurt but we will cure you in the long run. Treatment, you're going to kill me. Please restrain the patient. Use whatever force is necessary. The guards run in. Use force, got it. Nightwing says, throwing the table at the guards. He then turns it back to the doctor and the nurse and the doctor tells him, please wait, we're just doing our jobs. We want to help. Nightwing lifts another table ready to hit them. We're way past that now. And then he suddenly loses his strength, falling to his knees. You put something in my mind. Stay away. I won't hurt you if you let me go. The doctor and the nurse soon begin to tell him, wait, it's us. It's been so long. No wonder you don't recognize. The two take off their rat heads and Nightwing stares. No, no, this can't be. This isn't real. The corpses of John and Mary Grayson look back and the voice asks, don't they look familiar? Mom and Dad, their hopes for you flew so high. Too bad you were destined to fall, just like your parents. The bodies begin to wither away, and Nightwing goes on. I've had nightmares like this before, but they were never this vivid. Have you now? Maybe you're just a lost cause after all. Nightwing looks at the one-way mirror in front of him, and he jumps through it, shattering the glass, and there stands Insomnia. Nightwing readies himself for the fight, telling him, Nothing I see or hear can be trusted. I'm being betrayed by my own memories, my own mind. It's too real to be a dream. And yet, but Insomnia beats down Nightwing. And he wakes back up in his cell as the voice from before tells him, So you're awake. Nightwing grabs his head. Ugh, oh, awake, asleep. How can I tell the difference anymore? That's easy, because you stopped snoring. Nightwing looks around. Who's there? It's just me, I've been here the whole time. Nightwing jumps up and down, looking under his own bed. Why don't you just come out? I'm quite content remaining here, thank you. Getting frustrated, Nightwing flips the bed over to find nothing. The voice tells him that it happens to the best of us. It's okay to be afraid. The mind is a scary place. We must accept the reality of the multiverse, yet still we dismiss our own internal worlds, the dimensions inside of our brains. Nightwing looks around again, listening to where the voice is coming from, and then he looks over at the sheets, beginning to rip them apart. Once the shredded linen falls to the ground, Nightwing looks again, and a paper-thin Jonathan Crane stands there. Surprise, it's me, your old pal Scarecrow. I should have seen it sooner. This is all you're doing. How'd you do it, Scarecrow? A new strain of fear gas? Sorry, but I'm fresh out. If I'm good, they might give me my stash back on discharge. See, I'm nearly ready to return to the outside world, but you, <laughs> it's going to be a long road. We all know what you did, and we're all impressed. Suddenly, it sinks in, flashbacks beginning to inform him of what happened. Barbara was there asking, what did you do? What did you do, Dick? And Nightwing begins to realize what happened. He begins to cycle the thoughts through his mind. No. No, it wasn't me. He slams his fist on the ground as Scarecrow tells him, Denying it won't change the truth. You killed Batman. Two-Face begins to laugh maniacally. <laughs> you succeeded where we all failed, kid. A bit irritating, really. 
Nightwing gets it back up. No, no, this is all in my head. Sure, because you already knew that you'd done it. You tucked the memories away, but they stick around. Out of sight isn't out of mind. Nightwing begins to look around. I, I need to get out of here. I have to prove I didn't do it. A scarecrow grabs him. I was hoping you'd say that because I have a plan. I've made a map of the building, but the building has a nasty habit of changing when you're not looking, making cartography difficult. We're currently here, or maybe there, or we could be over there. As Scarecrow begins to go over his map, Nightwing tells him to be quiet because he can hear the guards coming. He hurries over and he can hear two guards dragging someone, and one of them complaining that they can't drag her on his own. She's like 90% metal at this point. Nightwing looks through the food slot to try and figure out who's being brought in, and when he sees who, he yells out, Put her down! Babs, tell me you're okay! Babs! But a metal-infused Barbara looks up, being dragged down the hallway. I've killed my father, and now they have the woman that I love. I don't give a damn if this is real. I'm gonna tear this whole place apart, even if it means destroying my own mind in the process! As the guards drag her away, Nightwing calls out to Barbara that he'll think of something that will get them out of here. Just, just hang on a bit longer, Babs! The guards snap back at him, telling him to keep it down or he'll find himself in re-education soon. Nightwing groans in frustration. The realization that he killed a Batman and then seeing his girlfriend being dragged in is too much for him. Scarecrow looms over. You can scream all you like, but nothing will happen. You should have seen what they did to What's-Her-Face, Black Canary. Nightwing spins back, grabbing Scarecrow. That's enough! Where's that map you drew? Scarecrow pulls out a piece of paper, right here. And just as I thought, it's a whole new design. Nightwing begins to unfold it. Buildings can't just change their layouts. He looks down at the completely new and insane design, complete with Scarecrow and Nightwing holding hands in the bottom corner. This makes no sense. This is a nightmare. Scarecrow leans in. No, it's more like a nightmare within a nightmare, right? Glad you're finally starting to get it. At that moment, the cell door swings open and Nightwing gets ready to fight. All right, who wants some? Nobody. It's chow time. Hopefully you've got an appetite. Today is Meatball Monday, Scarecrow says to him. However, as Nightwing begins to walk out, he looks around and sees that no one is there. All right, what's up with this? Everyone is already in the mess hall. Because we're on the naughty list, we're called last. The warden has a penchant for drama. Perhaps he wanted to give you a grand entrance. It's not every day the person who killed Batman eats here. As the doors open, Nightwing looks at all of the villains that he put in there, all in their twisted nightmare version glory. And in the back, Barbara grabs her tray of motor oil and batteries, getting ready to sit down when Nightwing runs over. What happened to you? We have to get you out of here now, Babs. She sighs. I got you too. You need to escape before they do the same thing. System buffering, 17%, please wait. As Barbara stares off, buffering her systems, her wires reach out, grabbing Killer Croc's arm, and he hisses, what the hell is this? Then up from above, a voice calls out that she warned them before about any of this. One more outburst and you'll regret it! Nightwing looks up to see that Harley Quinn is now the head guard. God, this kind of crap always happens when the kitchen serves meatballs. Before Nightwing could even ask what she's doing here, she sends out her hyenas, telling them, Take Croc down! Scarecrow then pushes Nightwing away. We gotta get out of here. I am not leaving Babs. As the riot begins to break out, Nightwing and Scarecrow hide behind one of the tables when suddenly, baby-faced Grundy punches a guard, launching him across the room. The body slams into the wall, falling right before them. And Nightwing notices a set of keys on him. While everyone continues brawling and hitting whatever is in front of them, Nightwing and Scarecrow sneak off to try and look for Barbara. And when they get to the next room, everything changes. Nightwing pulls out the map. All right, what is this place? It's not on the map. That's because it's not on the map. This area is uncharted. It's the back rooms of Arkham. I once worked with this fellow, Basil Grimes. Said he was an architect. Never saw a resume, but he seemed legit. If you were gonna map the building, Grimes would be your best bet, Nightwing. 
We did have a pair of walkie-talkies, but he's been missing for a few days now. Hopefully he's alive. Just then the walkie-talkie buzzes and Scarecrow pulls it out as Basil asks, Anyone there? Professor Crane. Scarecrow responds, I read you. What the hell happened out here? I may have taken a wrong turn. Not to worry. We're coming to find you, Basil. Basil pauses. We? He's with you, isn't he? The bad boy with the nice... But Nightwing interrupts. I can hear you. I left your trail for you. Just follow it for a bit and you should be able to find me. The two spot the blood marks in the back rooms, and Basil says, Oh, I forgot to mention, Oracle found her way into my radio frequency. She said to pass along a message. Find a way out and save yourself. Sounds like she really likes you, Bat Boy. She knows I can't leave her. So Basil asks, Are you going against her wishes just to satisfy your ego? Typical. Oh well, you should be coming up on me now. As they turn the next corner, Scarecrow looks down at the melted body of Basil Grimes. Oh, look at you! You're naked! Nightwing examines the body, stating that Basil is at an advanced state of decay. And this putrefaction. How long have you been gone? Oh, he's only been gone for like three days! Scarecrow tells him. Basil leans up, grabbing Nightwing, telling him, People change here. It happened to Oracle. She knew that you would be next. But you're going to escape, right? Live happily ever after. But how do you leave a place with no way in? Think about it. How did you get here? The story that you killed Batman. What about before? Any outstanding sins to atone for? Heard you made a few mistakes. Nightwing pulls his arm back. I've paid for those, and now it's my turn to... But at that moment, Barbara radios in, telling him to leave Basil alone. The poor man is already dead. Hurry to the next room and he'll find her. They don't have much time before he turns into a nightmare as well. Nightwing rushes past, opening the door to find Barbara hooked up to a machine, speaking to herself as she rattles off error messages and codes. Scarecrow takes a closer look. Oh, it appears she has a bug right there. See, it's right next to her heart. Nightwing reaches out, plucking the bug out. I've got you. I've always got you, Babs. She reboots, falling out. This is, this is a nightmare. I know. No, Nightwing, this is a literal nightmare. We are stuck in a literal nightmare. I've run enough simulations to recognize their hallmarks, and we are in one. Whatever this is, it's turning us into what we fear the most. An oracle here, she's afraid of being too reliant on computers. Well, I'm afraid of... Well, everything! It dilutes the effect. If anything, we should probably be most afraid of what Nightwing's fears are. At that moment, a spotlight begins to turn on and Insomnia shouts, Welcome one! Welcome all to the most magnificent show on Earth! Tonight's act features the high, flying chills and all the spills we pray to never see. Soon the room begins to shift and everyone finds themselves standing in the middle of the circus ring as Insomnia goes on stating, there are some who tame lions, some who charm snakes, and others who train bears. But tonight, all eyes are upon the bat. Batman, half dead, begins to shuffle in, and he begins to run towards Nightwing for murdering him. Nightwing jumps out of the way. None of this is real. I didn't kill you. I'm not. But Batman can't help himself, shouting, Murderer, witchcraft, wit, traitorous gifts, shameful lust. But this time, as Batman lunges, Nightwing grabs him by the arm, and his arm just falls off. Nightwing stares at his clawed hand. What's happening to me? Vile, lonesome cross. <laughs> Batman says, laughing at him. Barbara throws her wiring out, grabbing a hold of Batman, calling out to Nightwing, You're not a monster! Even if you're turning into one. Nightwing begins to run forward, jumping with both feet forward, kicking a giant hole into zombie Batman's chest. Insomnia laughs. Ha <laughs> the crowd to behold. The elegance and power of a flying Grayson. Come on up. Take your place in the spotlight. Make your parents proud. Nightwing climbs up to the high flying location. And he sees Insomnia's face change to that of Tony Zuko, the man that changed his life forever. Naturally, his face still haunts you. Maybe we should turn the heat up. What do you say, Nightwing? Nightwing grits his teeth, launching forward. I think it's time that you had something to fear. This is no longer my nightmare. It's yours, Insomnia. He twists and snaps Insomnia's neck, 
falling to the ground and looking back up. As if my fears would be so pedestrian. Nightwing hangs off the top rope as Scarecrow yells that he can jump. Don't worry, I'll catch you. And as Nightwing lands, he asks, where is Babs? And Scarecrow tells him, you know, a simple thank you would have sufficed, but Oracle has everything under control. Nightwing hurries over, calling out to Barbara, and she stands with Cassandra Kane and Stephanie Brown, stating that she's okay, and she got the Batgirls. They've all managed to break themselves out of this nightmare. But at that moment, a light begins to shine on Nightwing, and Barbara yells to watch out. Wires fly past, grabbing Batman, but this time she electrocutes him until his body disappears and transforms into literal bats. The bats begin to swirl and fly up through a hole, as Stephanie says that that might be their ticket out. Nightwing tells them to go, and Barbara stops. You always do this. But Nightwing tells her that she should know that he'll be fine. He has something that he has to do first. As the circus tent begins to burn, Nightwing walks back, and Scarecrow looks at him, telling him, Oh! You came back for me! How sweet! Nightwing reaches out, telling him that the plan was to escape together. Despite everything that he has done in the past, there's no way that he'd leave without Scarecrow. Scarecrow laughs. In a different world, we may have been friends, but alas, Nightwing. Nightwing tells him to take his hand, and Scarecrow just stands there. How does this end? You're going to carry me to safety tonight, but what happens tomorrow? Better leave while we're on speaking terms. Go. Save yourself. There's a moment of hesitation, but Nightwing turns back. I won't forget what happened here. And Scarecrow smiles. I know. The best part of you liked it. That time you got to kill daddy, darkness is a part of you. The thin margin between dread and desire. Tonight you tasted it and it left you wanting more. Nightwing begins to wake up and Scarecrow laughs. laughs. Now that we're alone, I need to know. What did you have for me? Please, Insomnia, I have been a patient. The crows begin to fly over and one lands on Scarecrow's arm. Did you do this all for me, Insomnia? made a place where I can indulge. Well, it was beautiful. <laughs> Nightwing then begins to wake up, telling himself that it was a bad dream. It's something that he's going to be thinking about for a long time to come. And there you guys go. I know it's a bit of a weird one to put out, but we had to tie something into the Joker trailer announcement, and I thought Joker Kills the Batman would be something you'd be interested in seeing, because maybe a lot of you skipped over Night Terrors. Either way, don't forget to like and subscribe as we bring you more videos on a regular basis right here at Comic Storian, and I'll see you next time.